Hey guys, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. You guys are in a place you have not been in a while. You're in our house and actually right here in the kitchen. Where I'm standing is in front of our home's breaker box. There's something above it which will be covered in this video. This video I want to say is final wire connections. It's like all of the various things that have to be done, small things here and there, a lot of safety things, as well as installing this behind us to allow us to finally flip the switch and take our house off grid. Let's go. I'm beginning to connect up the wires that run to our home, and these are aluminum stranded wires, so I have to use a product called Noalox. It's an antioxidant joint compound that you work and rub into all of the exposed threads of the wires, and then grip it into place, and it helps prevent oxidization. There we have it. Our load, or what powers our home, is connected. Line one, line two, these are the hots. The neutral is tied back here to the neutral bus bar, and the ground runs over here to the left to the earth or ground bus bar, which ties directly into the ground wire that goes straight down to the ground rod. All right guys, we are outside as you can very well see. And I'm over here at the back side of our north array where our, all of our conduit is and our disconnect box has just been mounted. So I'm working on stepping down this inch and a quarter conduit to the one inch knockout that comes in this disconnect box. So I've got a little series of adapters. I'm gonna hold this in place. And now with a pencil mark where I need to cut my conduit. To carefully cut through this PVC pipe, I'm going to be using my PVC cutters. These are really what is mostly used with plumbing. It's going to be a stretch to see if it'll cut through this inch and a quarter, but I think if I do a little bit here, 
rotate it, cut a little bit, rotate, cut a little bit. I'll have much more control over the amount of cut I get with this versus a Sawzall. Wish me luck. All right, moment of truth. Nice. No evidence at all that the wires were nicked. Shoo. All right, guys, so I ran into an issue. The conduit coming out of the ground is inch and a quarter. I bought uh, adapters and reducers to go from inch and a quarter down to the one inch to go through the disconnect box, but I don't have a coupler. And I looked everywhere. So this means I gotta stop and go to the store, which is about an hour round trip, until I remembered I do have a coupler. Right here. But, Sam, this pipe's not in the ground. You've got a pipe in the ground. Ah, ah, ah. I'm gonna cut this right here just to take advantage of the flare that comes from the factory on this extra piece and make myself a coupler and save myself a couple of hours worth of frustration and shopping and not spend any more money. All right, it's going to behoove me to unattach this from the board so I can move the box up and down and connect this together. Oh yes, <laughs> I'm ready to cut this two inch pipe and it's a similar story. I gotta be able to cut it without hitting the wires, but unfortunately this pipe is a lot larger than my PVC shears can do. I'm going to insert this inch and a quarter scrap piece as a sacrificial pipe, put it down inside here, and then work my way around cutting the outside of the two inch. I'm probably gonna mar this up, but that's okay. This is extra, it's scrap. I don't want to cut my wires. They are much more valuable to me. So go ahead and thread it through and then using the reciprocating saw I will carefully cut the perimeter of the two inch pipe separating it at the correct height to glue it and attach it to the disconnect box. All right all the way cut through it's pretty good. I'll just let you guys see it up close. I don't really feel any big cuts on the inch and a quarter. So that worked out really, really well. Same kind of story here, guys. I had to make my own field coupler. That's a flare off of one piece. And then we have a... <laughs> A mess of adapters and step downs to go from two inch to inch and a quarter to one inch and then on to our threaded adapter. It looks a little crazy, but it works. These eight copper strand 10 gauge wires barely fit through a one inch. I mean, okay, they, it fits, but I wouldn't want to try and fit any more wires through a one inch conduit. Just in case you're wondering about conduit sizes. Trying to be very careful not to cut the wire jackets as I feed it through the box. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together. That was just a dry fit. Guys, I got the disconnect box finally mounted, the conduit in place, glued in there and tightened down with the lock rings. I'm gonna begin wiring up the solar array wires to the disconnect. The solar panels themselves, none of them are wired up yet. So don't worry, I'm not working with voltage here. These are empty wires, but I'm wiring up the disconnect next. And I want to explain a little bit about what I'm doing here because it may not make sense at first. Throughout this whole project, you've heard me talk about four strings, four sets of wires, and the number four. But what you're seeing here are only three disconnect points. That is because the Lux Power Inverter that we have, while it shows four MPPT hookup, sort of, there's really only three. What I'm going to be doing out here is combining two strings into one, 
and then I'll have the other two on their own to give me three actual runs from the solar to the inverter. In retrospect, running the four pairs of wires, I shouldn't have done that fourth one. I wasn't thinking clearly enough whenever I was running wires, I was focused on that. So there is gonna be an extra pair of wires in here that won't get used. I've got it pulled out here to the left. Now, instead of just cutting this off and getting it out of the way, I want to try and leave myself enough length to be able to use in the future for any kind of expansion or growth or, I don't know, an inverter change and it has four MPPT controllers, we have the wires here. So there's gonna be a little bit of extra wires left over when all said and done, that'll be capped off. Those are just for future expansion. The way this disconnect works is you put your wire in the top, you put your wire in the bottom, and whatever is in line is what gets connected and disconnected. For DC power, you only have to run the red wire to your disconnect. The blacks, they don't have to go through this. They can get wire tied together, secured, and they just act as a neutral, so to speak, with house wiring terms. Consider the red is a hot, the black is neutral. Although it's not what, that's not how it works with DC power. So don't get that in your head. Just realize I'm only disconnecting the red with this disconnect, because that's all that needs to be done. This is gonna take me a while to finagle all of the wires around, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. I'll bring you guys back whenever I have the DC wires hooked up to their disconnects, the negative wires connected and capped off, and this extra set capped off as well. To join together my two negative wires from the solar array, the one that's just passing through, I am going to be using a splice block. You don't want to use wire nuts with DC wiring. You wanna make sure you use lugs or bus bars or something like that. You want a solid, thick mechanical fastener. And now to cover this splice connector, because it is all metal, it does contain the same current as the wires, I'm using some 3M electrical rubber tape. So this is not electrical tape. This in and of itself is not sticky, except whenever you stretch it and wrap it on itself. It allows you to create a rubber layer and protective coating around this material. You just pull it and tear it, and then you take off this kind of mesh coating on it. This helps prevent it sticking to itself. And now, you want to start it, and as you wrap, you want to stretch it. And now we have a watertight, durable, protective rubber coating from our splice block to anything around. This is not tape, it will not lose its adhesion. This is designed for this kind of application and works really, really well. My disconnect box is finally finished. That took a little bit longer than I expected and I had to put some tape on the holes that I knocked out because I got overzealous thinking in my head, this is also where the surge protectors are going to go, but they don't have to, and they will actually be better installed inside attached to our inverter. I had a phone call quickly with my friend Spencer, who does this for a living, so he is the expert, and said, hey, I got this set up, what do you think about this? And he said, well, I guess that would work, but it would be better to do it in there. So I'm hands down doing that. It makes things simpler out here. That does mean, for now, I have duct tape on my box. Eh, I don't like it. I'll go get some metal plates you can buy that cover up knockouts. I'll go pick up three of those or have to order those. Uh, but for now, the duct tape will be fine. This box is not watertight, although it is an outdoor rated box. It has drain holes in the bottom. It's just designed, it'll get wet, but it'll dry out on its own as well. So it's not like I've introduced more moisture into the box. It's just more of a personal preference and it Kind of looks ugly to have this otherwise nice new disconnect box already being duct taped up. Oh well. All right, what I want to do next is change gears and begin to actually wire together the individual solar panels to create our solar array or array of solar panels. What we have are 40 panels in total. There are 20 on each of our arrays. And this one that I'm under is right here at the disconnect. This is what I call our north array because it is northern than the other one because it is southern. It's the way they line up and orient at least. This array is going to consist of 10 solar panels connected in series, positive, negative, positive, negative, 
all of those together. That will be one array. Then we'll have the second set of 10 off this one, same exact way, 10 panels connected in series, and that will give us array number two. Array number three, it's actually gonna be all 20 panels connected. It will be done the same way, 10 panels in series, 10 panels in series, but instead of having it be two separate arrays, they will then get connected in parallel to create one larger array that the inverter can handle and be powered correctly. Each solar panel has two wires out of the back. One is negative and the other is positive. To connect them in series, you take the positive from the panel beside it and connect it into your negative. Then you take the positive from that side and connect it into the negative of the next. To connect them together, it is super easy. You just push, it clicks, and you're done. I take off the white clip that comes from the factory to kind of help the cables during shipping. I use one of them again to connect them like that. And then I just connect them together here. That's it. I don't even take the original zip ties off. It is fine. It is held up out of the way. And I will probably do something to put it about like this in the future. But for now, that is done. Piece of cake. And then I brought you guys in close for this last one because it goes so quick, it's easy to miss it. But simply attaching them there, just to kind of take the strain off of things and then plugging them together. That's it. So one thing you might be wondering, okay, it pushes, it clicks. How easy is it to take these apart? Is this going to be dangerous? Is somebody going to come out here and jiggle wiggle? Well, to get these particular connectors apart, you have to have a little piece that goes in here and there to release the tangs or the pieces that clip and then pull it apart. I did one because I hooked one up before I was ready and it was not, not easy to take apart. So this is safe and secure. Here on the end, you are left with one wire and this is the positive cable. All you have to do now is take this wire and connect it in. The only problem is this is on the end of the array. So this is where you need extra wire extra MC4 connectors and make yourself an extension. So it's gonna go from here all the way down there. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how to take one of the wires and crimp on the MC4 solar connector. I always like to start off by cutting the wire fresh and square, and then you strip off about three quarters of an inch worth. That exposes the bare copper wires. Now before you get any further, put on your wire nut, put on your weatherproofing jacket, and then put on the actual metal piece that you're going to clamp or crimp onto the wire. You have to use a special set of crimpers for this. You put it over like this, Hold it in place and it's kind of like a ratchet. Once you start, it wasn't, won't let you back off until you crimp it all the way. Then it releases. And then I like to move on to the next middle die, crimp, release, and then I move on to the third. It gets progressively tighter. At that point, you have a properly crimped end. And now this is your MC4 connector, I guess protector. This goes in just in the middle, push it until it doesn't go any further. Then you slide forward your weather seal, your wire nut, tighten it down together, grab your special wrenches that come with the kit if you buy it as a kit. One goes there, the other slips over here, and you tighten this until this wrench slips. That tells you you're tight enough, pull them off, and you're done. You have your own MC4 connector on a wire. So that is how we connect our solar panels together. We do them in series, positive, negative, positive, negative. And at the very end, get yourself some extensions till you're ready. You can connect them here, and then they connect into your wires that you've already run. Make sure, and I want to emphasize this, the wire connections of connecting the solar panels to their wires is the last thing you want to do. 
We still have some more work to do inside our storage building for connecting up our solar wires. We still have work to do inside the house as far as connecting up those wires. This solar array, these connections out here will be the absolute last thing that I connect because think of it as this is our power source. We don't want to work with electricity or wires with the power on, so we make sure this power stays unplugged until the end. Otherwise, it's rinse and repeat. We did this one array. I have this other one to do, which is taller and going to be more difficult, so we'll skip that on camera. And then I have to do the other one across the way. When I get to the point of connecting them into parallel, I'll bring you back and show you what difference that is. It's nothing magnanimous, but I will at least show you that whenever I get to that point. Alright, so we have the transfer switch box here. I'm going to go ahead and prepare it for wiring up. I'm going to remove this plastic cover just so it doesn't fall down on us as we're installing it. And I'm going to remove these two screws to take off this front cover and have access to the inside. This is where we're going to wire up the input, which in our case is the solar system coming in AC power, coming into the house. It will get wired up to the wires that are already pre-terminated here. But what I need to do first is knock out this hole at the bottom and attach a wire thimble so we can run the AC wires that's in our basement all the way from the inverter up into this box and have them in here to terminate when we're ready. I'm going to start by taking off this elbow connector because we don't need it for how we're wiring directly down into our home sub panel. And now I'm going to replace that elbow with just a straight clamp type connector. Well, as you can tell, that's a tight squeeze, but it fits wonderfully, <laughs> thank goodness. It fits between the studs, I got a little filler block here, but I also have room for these existing, existing wires to run around and up beside the box. And I think enough room to make it work. So, we'll go ahead and attach screws to this side to lock this transfer switch into the wall stud. To connect the transfer switch to the service wires or the incoming wires from the inverter, I have a difference in wire gauge. The wires coming in that I ran are overkill. This is future proof. So if we expand our system, we want to change out our transfer switch and put a, a critical loads panel or something larger, this wire will not have to be redone. However, for this connection, I have a relatively smaller gauge wire and a large one. So I'm using a splice connector designed for a specific range of wire gauge that this one and this one fits into to connect together. Since this is aluminum, I'm going to be using some of this Noalox antioxidant joint compound, working it into the fibers, then putting it together and clamping it up, and then wrapping it with the same rubber tape we used outside at our disconnect switch, which is some right here you can see, to create a isolated, correctly insulated bond to cover everything up.
there we go. That completes the input wiring from our inverter. The hot line one, line two, neutral, and ground have all been connected. We are done with the transfer switch for right now. Now we're going to transfer it down into our main circuit breaker box to wire up all of this into our panel. So our transfer switch is one that is a 240 volt transfer switch. So it means that it comes pre-wired with two double pole breakers and then six single pole. What I need to do is take out one of the double poles and replace it with two single poles because we don't need but just one 240 volt circuit up here, which is for our mini split system. And the rest are just going to be 120 volt regular circuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those out and then we'll cut the power off to the house and we will wire up and connect everything into our home's main panel. To change this from a two pole switch to two single ones since we swapped out our breaker, you just simply twist this brass barrel in the middle and it walks out the bolt that binds the two together. You can kind of see it moving out here to the right. Once it goes so far, you can just grab it and pull it on out. Otherwise, you just keep threading the brass part in the middle and it will push it out and then separate them into two separate switches. At this point, we're ready to turn the power off to the house and connect up all of these wires. This may look like a big mess. Don't get intimidated by this. You basically have four things going on. You have your neutral. Connect this up to your breaker box where all your other neutrals are connected. You then have your ground. That's this green wire. Do the same thing. Connect it up wherever your ground wires are connected. And then you have a bunch of red and black wires. They are labeled. They are stamped with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of those letters and it corresponds to your transfer switches labels which is on that plate we took off. So the plate that sits right here on the front, it has the letters labeled for your circuits. Match up the letter with the wire and then you're good to go. Now as far as what you do down in your breaker box, you have red and black wires. The red wires go to your breaker. So as an example, let's say this red wire, this is circuit B, it is for the refrigerator. I want to find the circuit in my box for refrigerator, unhook the wire, and put this red one in the place of the one I just took off. Then we take that wire we unhooked, we find the black wire that is labeled B, and we connect the black one to the one that we had just unhooked with a splice connector. That's it. You're done. It looks a lot more complicated than it really is. There is um, a certain product that is going to be used that makes my life a lot easier for this. And those are Wago inline wire connectors. You'll see me use them as we go along connecting things up and they are much, much easier to use and they are very forgiving. So I always prefer to use those. That being said, let's go ahead and get over here and get started. Neutral wire, ground wire, and then all the red and black wires. There we go, all done with the wiring. Now I'm not gonna leave this rat's nest like it is. I'm gonna go get some zip ties and I'm gonna clean these wires up a lot better than what they look like now. 
I also want to see if we can find our Emporia unit. We have a smart Emporia home panel energy monitor. I took it out whenever I upgraded this panel in the home and I wanted to reinstall it. So I'm gonna go see if I can find that. I don't know, it might be somewhere safe and put up where I don't know where that is. But if I can get it, I will. I'll put it back in here. But otherwise, zip tie, a little bit of cable management and wire management, and we're done. So there we have it guys. One last look at everything before I cover it up and it just looks pretty. As a reminder, the transfer switch up top completely isolates our solar system from the grid. So we still have the capability and the option to choose to run individual circuits from the grid or from our own solar off-grid system. This is what is pretty much required as far as having a true 100% disconnect and not ever have the ability to backfeed the grid, which is what you want for a safety standpoint. That's what we wanted to do so we can keep our system completely separate from the grid. At this point, it is time to go ahead and put our covers back on, our trim rings on, our doors and everything, and take one final look at this install to see how nice, I hope, it ended up in the end. So guys, what I want to do next is wire up our SPDs, not SPDs, SPD, Surge Protection Devices. We have three of these to wire up. These are DC surge protectors, and each one will get wired in to each of our three solar arrays. This allows us to have a level of protection against surges on our solar panels and things on the DC side. You don't see these very often in DIY installs, but they are extremely important. They protect your investment of all of those solar panels, the hardware, the wiring, the inverter portions over here on the DC side, and are well worth the money you will spend to have in place in the event of a surge. The way I'm wiring these up is exactly as I've been directed by Spencer from Langston's Alternative Power, who is a professional off-grid alternative power solar guru. He knows all of this stuff. I've been closely talking with him and consulting with him as I purchased the surge protectors from him and our solar array disconnect switch and other bits and bobbins for this project. He instructed me on how to wire these up, which is to connect the red wire of the surge protection device to the red wire from the solar array. Same thing with the black and then the green one to attach to the ground bus bar, which we have inside the Lux Power Inverter, which is directly attached to the grounding wire and ground rod here at the building. Simply repeating that step three times over means our wiring for the surge protection devices is now done. At this point, we are ready to go outside. I have a little bit more wire connections to do out there at our first large solar array, our southern array. Once we get that done though, I think we're ready to flip the switch. Everything is done in here. Everything is wired up, connected, crimped down, double checked, triple checked, and I think we're good to go. So I want to take a little bit of time in this video to now talk about some important things as far as final connections. What I'm talking about right now is grounding the solar array. So since we bought some Tamarack rails, they are all self bonding. What that means is the rails, when you splice them together, electrically bond themselves together. And when you use the clamps, those also bond the solar panels to the rails. Makes everything one from an electrical standpoint. What I'm going to install now is the ground wire clamps. They go in the rails, and this is going to allow me to bond the rails to a ground wire that I'm going to tie to all four of our rails. Remember, we got four runs going this way and it'll run from all of those straight down to the ground to a 10 foot ground rod we have in the ground. So that's gonna properly electrically ground this array here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing at our second array to make these as safe as possible and properly ground them. 
All right, this is how you install the ground clamps to the rail. And this would be easier to do before you put your panels on, but there is a way to do it like this. Loosen the bolt pretty much all the way to the end. Then you wanna slide it up and over your rail. So just like that, and then rotate it in into your track and kind of rotate that perpendicular. So it's hard to see because it's mostly hidden, but that metal piece is now in the track, clamping up, and as we tighten the bolt with a wrench, it will pinch everything together, which is where our wire is about to be run as well. Again, this would have been a lot easier to do before the panels were installed. Here's a look at the ground wire we're using. It's just bare, solid copper wire to use as little as possible because it's not cheap. I'm starting up high, I'm gonna run it from here down towards the ground and then at the ground rod will be installed at the lowest point of the panel array. That way it's the shortest amount of wire length run overall. Here's a look at the ground rod we are going to be putting into the ground. It is a copper coated metal rod. This is 5 8 inch diameter and 10 feet tall. Yikes. To install these, the number one tool that I found to be most helpful is this, a fence post driver. So get your step stool ladder, get your Wheaties, get your driver, and hammer it in the ground. All the way in the ground. It is time to connect up our two single arrays into one. So what I'm going to be using is what is known as a branch connector. This one happens to be a three into one because it's what I have on hand right now, but I have a two into one on order. This will still work fine. It's just a little bit excessive to have one of these just hanging out unused. These you get in sets of pairs because you have connectors and crimps for positive and negative. So it's as simple as plugging these two into the solar arrays and then this one gets plugged into the wire that's going through our conduit to our disconnect box it is also very very important to stress this and please listen anytime you're connecting solar do not have it connected or under load these wires are disconnected at our disconnect they're not going back to our inverter that as soon as i connect them are going to want to pull electricity to charge if you plug them up under load, you run a very high risk of being electrocuted. Don't chance it. So make sure this section here is the last thing you connect together because at this point, anything downstream from here will have electricity going to it, but also make sure nothing else is on and your safety disconnects because you have them, right? You should have been properly disconnected. Oh yeah, guys, all of our wire connections are done. Solar is done, final hookups are finished, grounded, everything's connected in our green building, our utility building. Ooh, isn't that a double dip of a chip of a name? Utility building. It's all done, everything's wired up into the house. <laughs> I think we're ready to flip some switches. Are you guys excited? Are you excited as I am? You might be, you may not be. I think I'm mostly relieved that this project is done. Let me go grab Angela. Let's flip some switches, kick the tires, don't light any fires, but take our house off grid. So right here to the left, I'll try and circle it on the screen. You can see the three MPPT solar inputs. Notice how the top is twice the wattage of the middle and bottom. That is our south array. That's the double array. Then on the middle and the bottom, those are the two that's on our back array. Here you can also see that the battery is fully charged. 
So we're not really bringing in much solar because there's nowhere to put it. Let's go ahead and flip the switch in the house and change those odds to our favor. Wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? I so, don't know what goes where. <laughs> so your thoughts, I mean, you weren't out in this utility building, mm -mm. but you've seen it. It's wired everywhere. It is something you take one step at a time and it'll make sense, just one step at a time. What'd you think about the solar out there? Because you were out there helping me a lot off camera. It wasn't really that bad hooking it up. You just had to know where the wires connected with the other wires and that type thing. Yeah. Wiring up solar arrays is in and of itself easy. Although there is a lot of technical things to consider as far as how many panels do you have? How large of an array can you wire in? You've got to think about voltages and all of that stuff. Honestly, was me checking with Spencer who's the guy we're working with, Langston's Alternative Power, and saying, hey, I think I want to do a 10 panel array. Is that good? And he would say yes, no. And he also said, look, you can double it up. You're still good there. So hands down, Spencer from Langston's Alternative Power has been my go-to. We purchased a lot of our components from him and he is a really, really good resource. So if you asked us specific questions and you get the reply of, I don't know, I would ask Spencer, it's because I don't know. I would ask Spencer. So one thing I'm wondering, do we have anything else left to do? I have heard this question a lot. What's left to do? What do you have next to do? Well, I'm happy to say that there's nothing left to do. Really? Except for one thing, and that's flipping the switch. Would you like to have the honors? I guess so. Do you guys are ready for this? Are you excited as we are? <laughs> Probably not, but we're excited. So let's bring you guys in close for the flip of the switch.